Hello everybody, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is an actress and also recently a voice actress. You may know her as the voice of Nina da Costa, Sunspot's mom in X-Men 97. Um, she's also played characters like La Portia in Rival Speak and Rival Peak. Evangelina Chadid in The Light of My Eyes, again, Please forgive me if I do if I pronounce any of these wrong. You're welcome to correct me. Don't worry. Um, Sonia in The Rookie, The Traveller in Lazarus, and other TV shows, films such as La, Sele- La Selection, um, La Otra Cara de la Alma, um, Ultimo Carico, A Letter to Rachel, Speed Date, Real Nightmare, Under, Liber- Liberation, and more. And she was also a looper, um, like an ADR looper, on Fast X and... Jungle Cruise, the film Jungle Cruise. My guest is Christine Webby. Hi, Christine. Oh, wow. Hi, Amber. <laughs> I am so happy to be here and, you know, have this time talking to you and awesome. uh, to everybody that follows you. Awesome. Well, it is very nice to have you on my show. And do please do forgive me if I did pronounce any of the, your titles wrong. You were um, wonderful. Actually, I was very, very impressed. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I know a tiny little bit of Spanish, but I said, like I said before, it's um, European Spanish and not like Southern American. Brazil, Brazilian Spanish um or like was it like Latin American Spanish yeah I don't know um but yeah um honestly like you've done all these live action roles and your only voice role to date is in X-Men 97 um so instead of starting all the way back in the beginning I'm actually interested how did you sort of did you audition for X did you audition for X-Men did you was it like a casting call were you recommended I want to know how you sort of jumped into the voiceover world well, my my journey with voiceover started some time ago. Like um, um, when I was, I was invited um, to to dub a you know a soap opera, a South American mm-hmm. soap opera, and um, bring it to. So it was in Spanish, the original, and I brought it to Portuguese. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's how it started, and I did a lot of dubbing throughout my career. Mm-hmm. And then it transitioned, right? Like it just happened. It kind of, you know, it got in there because my main focus, you know, has always been like with acting, film, TV, theater. And then voiceover, I think, just found me. And I'm very happy that it did. Um, for X-Men, I got an audition, like I think everybody, I believe everybody in this project and um yeah it was super cool they sent me an audition with a code name because of course we didn't know and i think that was wonderful because it took the pressure off you know when you're auditioning for something so big sometimes you know you you can feel the responsibility so it was wonderful they sent me an audition with a code name and was one of those auditions that to be honest was so quick like i just i felt it and I, i i thought okay well amazing and Nina had a different a different name on the audition so technically I was auditioning to play a mom and um yes I think in the audition my son was traveling somewhere and I told him you know I I got him on the phone and I told him how much I missed him so that's how I got it then I I was traveling and uh, my agent called and he told me that I had booked um, uh, this project, but he still used the code name. And um, so then he, he, he told me, he said, Christine, you, you actually, you got X-Men, you got in the X-Men. I said, oh my God, that's fantastic. So that's the that's this brief story behind it. And then I started all my research about the characters, about the shows about everything else and um it's been an incredible journey awesome awesome and what was it like i presume obviously you recorded by yourself when um because this was like sort of i'd say yeah people recorded for the show about two three years ago they started recording during covid maybe i don't know yes absolutely it was right after the pandemic so the way that it, it, it worked is, um, so we were invited, uh, we, we had a specific studio that we would go to and uh, I just recorded, yes, I had a sound engineer there with me and then I have everybody else, all the creative team, I had it, them on, on a Zoom, you know, like we, we were just, there was a big screen and they could see me and then we interacted. That's how it worked, but 
yes, I mean, I would love to have played it like with all the other characters, like you know, there with me. But I think it it worked, and it's it's the new way, right? Yeah, honestly, like I'm thrilled for you. And uh, working with uh, Guy Augustini, um, I've got as of course he played your son in the show. Uh, so I, you, you have a pres- obviously you've met in person at like the watch parties, and I believe you recently did a pride parade in West Hollywood. Is that yes? Yeah, yes. you did. Oh yeah, you God. did that with uh, yeah. Holly, Holly Child. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yes. what was it like to uh, meet him in person? At, uh, well, long actually. Last I, I have a very um, interesting story because I had worked with Guy um, in another project. We did some looping for this film called Musica, oh, which okay. is, yes, we did it. So I met him at Fox Studios, you know, when we were there the entire day recording for Musica. Mm-hmm. And um, we had both already, like, w- we were way into X-Men. And we didn't know. It was so spread and so like, you know, they really kept it so together that we didn't know at that day. And we I had already, you know, recorded a few episodes of Nina and he had recorded as well, I'm sure. And we were just, oh, well, so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Let's keep in touch, blah, blah, blah. We Little did we know that we were actually in such a cool project together. And um, yeah, then one day, I think, when we were allowed to start releasing like some news and some things related to the show, I saw that it was Guy. And then I sent him a message and I said, I can't believe, I can't believe that you, you're the one playing my son. This is amazing. Well, Guy is such a Guy. Son. Yes. Guy is such a, a, a sweet person. You know, he's, he really like shines and uh, it's, it's, it's magical the way it happened. Awesome. I'm also like meeting Holly as well, if it was Jubilee. Yes, 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 I did. But Holly, I met her at one of the watch parties in Hollywood. Ah, right, yeah. Yes. Where, where, where and then we did the parade together. And then we did yeah. the parade. Yeah, yeah. Where, were, where were the watch parties? Were that a sort of the, like a Star Wars cantina themed place? I can't remember. Yes, it's it. called Scum and Villainy Cantina. That, it's on it. Hollywood Boulevard. I think I, I remember looking it up. Um, uh, I've, I've, yeah. got to look, I've got it. I've got to look it up now. Um, so, uh, which one did you say it was? Was it Cabo Cantina? Scum and Villainy Cantina. Scum and Villainy. Excuse me, that's my fault. Um, Scum and Villainy. I've got to see because when I was sort of there, I did have a walk up Hollywood Boulevard, but I didn't really walk too far, so I probably. Ended up, I'm, I'm looking at it now. So I started sort of there and I kind of came along here. I might have walked that far. I don't know. I'm having, a, I've got, I'm so. Yeah, Hollywood. I mean, yes, it's, it, there's so much to watch around, to look around and you see. And, you know, there's so much like happening in Hollywood Boulevard. So it's, it's easy, like when, especially when you're, you're here, you know, as a tourist and, you know, you want to see everything. It's, it's, but the cantina is wonderful. And the parties were just so, we had so much fun. And especially and, like watching the episodes with everybody and uh, some, some cast and, and, and fans of the show. It was very, very special. Well, I, I've just had a look now and I walked up when I was there. I walked up to a 7-Eleven, I believe. And that was just before Scum and Villainy Cantina. It was literally just a few doors off. So I was like, oh, oh so there nice. you go. <laughs> Honestly, just like, I really do miss it. It was a really lovely, and I was so happy that I was sort of in the area at the right time for the X-Men premiere party. And I'm very, very fortunate. Um, but honestly, are you surprised with like, I mean, it's one of Disney Plus's highest sort of watch shows recently, you know, and like and Marvel shows especially. So how how do you feel about that working alongside such a huge cast, like the legacy people and then the one the newcomers that have just come in? How does it make you feel that sort of everything's come together? Amber, I feel I feel so blessed because the Aww. people around the show, it's I can't tell you like how magical it has been because you know it's it's a project I think that, I think it's one of the those projects that it's so rare to find because the people around it it, it works oh my god ma 
my ear pods fail. So, oh dear. Um, th yeah, that's good. I got it. Um, okay. It's so it's so brilliant because the cast, the the the, the crew, the, the the team of creatives behind it. I mean, everybody. It it works like a family. And we are so together in this, you know, I, I, I believe that it's, it's when I met everybody, like all the, you know, like the, um, my, my fellow actors and, and, and some of the creatives, um, they were so, they were there and people that has been there since the beginning and they were so like, they would embrace you like, Hey, welcome to the family. Like we are here with you and, and let's do this together. So I think there's there is this magical quality about uh, X Men, and um, we all recognize each other and we see it and we kind of embrace each other, you know, in in a way that it's 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 not the usual. And especially, look, when I say X Men family, I I include everybody. I include fans of the show. I include. Because we are a big family, and I believe that we are in this together, and that's why X Men ninety seven. I think it's been so successful, right? Because everybody was waiting for it, everybody was cheering for it. Every episode, at every, and everybody worked so hard to make it happen. Like, let's talk about the brilliance of Bo. Like, Bo was just so brilliant. Like, yeah, you know writing it and 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 creating it and put this this thing you know together again and and bringing it back and and Jake and oh my god and our amazing um casting director and director uh, Meredith Meredith so Meredith Lane. Meredith Lane yes so she really like she you know you feel I I felt like she was there with me you know mm -hmm. almost like um, yeah, holding my hands when I was, you know, kind of recording, not literally, but she was there on the screen and, and she was, you can feel the support and the passion behind it in each one of those people during the entire time. So I think that is very, very special. I 100% agree with you, Christine. 100% honestly. It feels like a project that's been made, not just, you know, for profit, but with love. Oh, exactly, exactly. And it's so different. Like, uh, of course, there is, we have Disney behind it and we have, you know, like the the the, the, the name oh, behind it and everything, yeah. but um, the passion behind it. And I think when you find a project like this to work, it's so special. It's It's almost like a blessing because you're there. I remember when I got the scripts, that was the most amazing moment for me, Amber, because when I got the script and then I, you know, you see all those names like Wolverine and, you know, and you start reading it. And in my one of my episodes, Captain American was there. And all, it's just, it's fascinating. And you want to read more and more and you let, let me research this. So the preparation for it was also really, you know, uh, I had a lot, lots and lots of fun with it. Awesome. Well, I can't ask you about season two just yet because of NDAs yeah. and stuff, even though I would <laughs> love to ask you, you know, does it you know, appear in season two or what can we expect? But um, instead, I'm going to ask you about the watch along parties that um used to be held, of course, at Scum and Villainy Cantina on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, and it was every, was it Wednesday? Because that was when the uh, episodes released, wasn't it? Yes. It was, it started, I think, with, with the first episode. So every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, every Wednesday practically, and we we would meet there. So I actually I started um, attending those parties. I think from episode seven or eight. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't there for the first ones, but um, yeah, I think it's very magical. I really, you know. it it is very magical. It is very magical, and and just to watch with everybody else and see the reactions and you know of course I knew what was happening but there were so many people watching it for the first time with us so when you see their reaction you know it's 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 special yeah yeah and, I don't know. It, 
and it's so special to see that so many people relate to all of the characters, to each one of them, and um, to have so many people reach out to me and tell me their their own stories behind it, like you know, like how they relate to the project and how they relate to Nina, why they relate to that to the scene. That's you know, like especially that first scene when she shared she shared with uh, um, Roberto shares with her, you know, the news, and you know he comes out quote unquote so it's it's like it's and I had so many people reach out and share their experiences and it was so beautiful it's like that moment of connection with another human being yeah and it sort of like throws back to the first sort of two episodes of the original X-Men Night of the Sentinels because Jubilee was sort of the new kid on the block and you know the parents didn't know you know foster parents didn't know that she was a mutant and stuff like that and then she sort of you know they found out and then obviously she joined the X-Men and then in the new series Sunspot is a technically a mutant and then you know comes out to his mom and then he technically becomes a part of the X-Men I suppose but yeah I love how they sort of like and also becomes one of Jubilee's closest friends so I love how they sort of you know carried that on from the original tradition of new kid joins the uh the team and stuff like that but honestly yeah going back to the watch parties I think it's very they're very faithful, you know. I've never heard of any other TV show. Who organized the watch parties? Was it Marvel themselves or was it? Was oh, it yes. Cast- well, let's talk about that. So uh, Kevin was, you know, um, one of the, the people who organized it with Chris. And um, um, they were there for the Q&As and for everything. And also Scum and Villainy, I think they have a big role in it. And we have like to really yeah. thank them for hosting us, mm-hmm. for having us all the time. And um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was fan uh, made or if it was organized by Marvel themselves. But yeah, honestly, like I've not heard of any other shows that have had like live watch parties every week. So that is really cool. It would have been cool to attend one of those. It, um, yeah, see, it, even even yeah. for this specific um 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 thing, like more, it, it's like this 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 show is so special. Because I, it's the passion behind it. It's the passion that it has been uniting us and, and bringing all these people together. Yeah, I, I, I really love it. I love the energy and the passion, from not just from the fans, but from the voice actors and everyone who works on the show as well. I think it's really wonderful and I can't yeah. wait for season two. I know you've, uh, <laughs> you've probably started recording, I believe. I don't know, because I know some other people have told me that they've, you know, started recording their lines. So, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know what you think of it, of it so far, but I hope you're enjoying all of the recordings. I presume you're still doing them solo and maybe from home or are you doing it from a studio or... I don't know. Yeah, um, well, the, the recordings for the for the show, we 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 do it at a studio. Ah, you know, right. Okay. Just because, yes, we we have to go to a studio, and um, yeah, because it has it. You know, it's it's so professionally done, of course. So, yeah. um, and and there is a way for us to have to make sure that you know all the all the the people that they need to be in the session with us you know they they are there and you know even if through, through zoom but um yeah cool cool now i want to sort of take it back to sort of a uh, a younger christine maybe um what's what what sort of made you want to become an actress <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, it it was always there, like in my heart, and mm-hmm. it, you know it. I think the main thing for me, I love life, Amber. I love. Mm-hmm. I think life is a blessing, and um, and acting gives me the opportunity of living multiple lives in one, right? Because I have to connect with, I have to connect with many characters, and and mm-hmm. and empathize and try to you know step on their shoes and 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 see the world through their perspective yeah and I think acting makes me a better human being because it allows me that connection with and 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 seeing the world through so many through so many lenses you know so uh, that's why I loved acting and I you know from you know the first moment that I had an opportunity to experience it Mm-hmm. And um, it it didn't happen in Brazil. It it happened in Italy. I was in Italy, 
and I was living there. And um, that's where I have an, uh, my first experience with acting. And I, I, I started studying and I started my career in Italy. I was living in Florence. Mm-hmm. And um, I had I had loads of support from from my mother, and um, oh. I like to say it that this it was a you know I have uh, that was so special because it definitely gave me the strength I needed to 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 have the courage to start this path because you know it's it's like everything else you do in life it's it's. It works better if you have the support. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you know, I love parents who are passionate for what their children do, like my parents. Are yes, for my sort of career and voiceover. Um, but yeah, you've got a you've got an interesting past. You've been all over the place. You were born in Brazil. You were raised there, I believe. Um, you then graduated. Yes. You moved to Italy, and now you're in America in Los Angeles. Like you've been all over the place. Wow, what's I of- know? I know three continents, and isn't that I- wonderful? <laughs> I know, yeah. So, what made what 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 how what made you sort of want to move to Italy, and then after that, I presume it was your acting career that made you move to LA. Um, exactly, yeah. That's how it happened. Well, um, so back in Brazil, I was a show jumper. I used to oh. I used to be a, a horse rider. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so. Cool. That is- Cool. Yeah, so going but going back in time, uh, mm-hmm. one of my main horses had a problem, and on his ligaments, and he couldn't jump anymore. Oh, and yeah. by the time that that happened, I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, okay, you know, I could I couldn't use a break, and uh, I would love to go to Italy." And yeah, my I have grandparents that you know were Italian, so maybe research a little bit about the culture, about everything, and. Um, so I, that's that's what I did and take a break. So I I initially I went to Italy and the plan was to stay there for three months. But but then I, I started studying Italian and I fell in love with Florence. Florence is such a it's it's a, it's a it's an open sky museum. You know, like there's so much art and so much so much life, right? Um, so much history, and I, I fell in love with it. So I went back to Brazil briefly, and then at, I, I knew that I want to continue my studies in Florence. And right after I went back to Florence, I had this opportunity to, um, you know, start exploring acting. And um, I think I'm moved by passion, you know, because I really, again, I, I, I felt this deep connection from the very first moment I, I I I had an opportunity. I watched the class, and uh, the things that the teacher was saying, and it's so deeply connected with me. So that's how I started. I just I, I followed my heart. What a lovely story! I really I love it. As I said before, passionate people. I love it honestly. Um, have you? This is probably going to be hard for you to answer. Have you got a favorite on? camera live action role that you've ever done you don't have to pick a favorite you could pick more than one favorite or you know it could be tv um, film stage anything really. okay i'm gonna tell you there is something coming out very soon i don't know oh. when but it'll be out this year oh. uh, i'll be in the upcoming and final season of seal team and oh. um yes that project was really special i can't tell i can't talk much about it but if you if you get like my one of yeah it that it was really really special to be on that set with those people and my character it's 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 really cool so um yeah i think that one if i had to pick one <laughs> oh that's awesome do you know what network it will be airing on or do you not know yet oh yeah uh cbs i think cbs, CBS. but i think mm-hmm. then it, it goes around i think I don't. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it wrong. Maybe Paramount Plus. I think it's Paramount Plus. Yeah, we get that over here, so I'll probably be able. Yeah. To get do it. you? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know the release date yet. I can't tell you, but the way that I booked that project, the way that it came around, the way that my my character developed, you know, throughout the season, I it mm-hmm. was a, it was a really special one. 
Oh, that's really cool. Well, I'd love to check it out as soon as it's out on Paramount Plus because um, we don't get CBS over here. So Paramount Plus would be the next best thing. Yeah, me. Paramount Plus. I think it's mm. Paramount Plus. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, going back to your voiceover career, um, when I said, you know, X Men was your first voiceover thing, obviously, technically, it wasn't because you've already done, you know, a little bit of certain voiceover, some live action stuff. You've done uh, looping, which we're just about to talk about, actually. I'd love to talk about that. Um, so, what was it like being an ADR looper? Of course, Fast X and Jungle Cruise, I believe, are, well, I mean, Fast X is uh, Jungle Cruise live action, the live action films. Yeah, I think, okay. you know, Amber, the thing is, one of the things that I love, you know, the most about acting and being in all these different projects, because they are all very different. It, look, it's mm -hmm. all the same acting, right? Yeah. It's like the yeah. base of it. It's, it's really the same. But the technicalities of each one of them, they are very different. And yeah. each one is very special in... um. In, in a way. So um, um, being a looper, we just spend an entire day like in studio with multiple actors. And it's so alive because we have to improvise and we have to sometimes, you know, they ask us for, you know, like a, a like a group kind of thing. And it's it, and it's fun. Like, for example, when I did Fast Men, um, oh, it was it's so like we were all dancing, in the, you know, in the studio because we have to recreate the best we can, you know, for those voices and, and, and to, to really um, make it like um, a, a kind of, you know, like original in, in its way, in the way that, you know, yeah. even if it's a loop, a looping and it will be like, you know, you don't, it's, you really have to pay attention to hear those voices normally, you know, because it's, it's like in the in the background of it, but it's uh, it's magical to do it, and we learn so much, like just to be there and experience other actors, and and um, and it's a fun day with voice, and it's a fun day practicing what we love to do and using our voices, and it's it's really cool. And each group is very different, Ooh. and we get to see and we get to see like the project like way before, so you know, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, even if that's it was how I like... describe. I think looping is fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, as you said, you get to see the other project before, but even like even if it's complete, even if it's like a work in progress print, it's. I think it's really cool. You sort of get to see it in advance, and then, like, I'm presuming ADR is like you either fill in some lines from actors who obviously couldn't make it back to filming, or you do, you know, background walla or sound effects yes. or just people talking yep. in the background. Yeah, yeah. I presumed it was something along the lines of that. Um. Would you like to do more voiceover in the future for cartoons or maybe video games or anything like that? I'd, I'd love to. I would love to play roles. I am still auditioning for, you know, for uh, for some projects that are coming out. Ooh. And uh, and uh, yes, I think um, I hope that this was the first of many because it's 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 amazing. It's so special. It's you don't see yourself on screen, but you have so much freedom while while you're recording it and and and, and planning like characteristics of, of 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 the character and it's some things that you want to come across, you know, like that, like for the character to you know to have and to um, it's it's special. I think that the amount of work that you put behind it is the same. Um, yeah. My earpods keep falling. I think I have. <laughs> oh dear. What AirPods have you got? Have you got standard or is it Air? Uh, yeah, it's like the, no, it's it's this new Apple. It doesn't. Sometimes it it it's not the best thing for me, but um. What? I was gonna say because the yeah, the AirPods Pro have sort of like you know like the the yeah they are a little bit like you. exactly they have this little yeah little yeah 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 well Christine Webby is now hiring for voiceover work if you if anyone's interested out there I'd love to hear you in more stuff honestly like I don't think X Men it's not just X Men that does it justice I think you're a really terrific actress both on camera and voiceover I'm glad yeah. okay <laughs> thank you. Thank you're you. welcome you're welcome okay this is probably going to be a hard one for you to answer what do you, what do you think has been your proudest achievement so far it could be in acting could be you know anything really 
my proudest achievement. You know, I have to think because um, that's okay. If I have to give acting. one, I mean, I'm going to tell you on acting. I was cast in a very special project. Um, I got to be cast on a Francis Ford Coppola film. It was a private project. It didn't wow. get to be screened everywhere, but I got mm -hmm. to work with him. And um, we spent one, in, you know, um, entire day at the callback, like half half a day, like the afternoon part of the day. We we all the actors in the callback. We went together um, to this dance school at the time, and 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 Francis w was there with us, and he mm -hmm. was directing us through some, you know. Um, uh, scenes and we would like we were really like um we did some um kind of acting workout together and it, that was really magical and then of course when I booked the role that was really special because you know having the pleasure of being on, on a set with Francis Ford Coppola it's just so magical that is so awesome. definitely that was one. I couldn't believe at the first audition because you were expecting like it was an in-person audition, but it was an open call back. And then, um, yeah, he was looking for Italians, for Italian actors in town. And um, so when we arrived at the place and then they called me in and right there at the end of the room, there he was, you know, that was it was so special to be auditioned by him and 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 it, it, you would just you would just talk to me and ask me actually we got to talk about Lebanese food because he asked wow. me where my last name was from and my last name is Lebanese oh, and then awesome. you know yeah, yeah. That is really so cool. it was it was really special well I'm happy for you I'm really happy for you <laughs> that, is, that is a lovely lovely achievement story definitely now Christine yeah. okay I, I want to ask you like one final question it's very important so I want you to think carefully about your answer because right this is this is like the most important thing I've ever asked you out of like the whole interview okay so my big final question to you is what is your favorite color oh my god <laughs> I think <laughs> my favorite co color my favorite well when I was a kid, it used to be blue. Oh, okay. Yes, I wanted yeah. blue everything. Like you know, my blanket was blue, and um, awesome. Yes, everything was like every. If I had to choose, like the, the, the like some some dress for a doll, it would be blue, or um, I don't know, like a bicycle. And so nowadays, I think, I think it changed a little bit. I love the, I love the white color. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah. I was going to yeah, say, I, I, I love asking people because, you know, there's so many yes. colors. Yeah. And then mine's uh, yeah. personally yellow. I've got one yellow? <laughs> yeah. So I was asking, like, every time someone says yellow, I'm like, hey, yeah. But honestly, like, I love all colors there. They're, they're very bright. They're very colorful. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. They're quite awesome. But yeah, thank you for answering my questions, Christine. It was very, very oh, lovely to have you on my show. And I wish you all the best of luck with the rest of your acting career that you're doing for the, you know, rest of the year and beyond. And also X-Men 97 season two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, uh, I, it was a pleasure, Amber. It was really a pleasure. pleasure. I had such an amazing time talking to you. And um, yeah, I will hope that I'll see you more. I see you when you come to LA or you yeah. know, I will get to talk to you more in the future. Yeah, hopefully I'll let you know. Um, before we uh, before we round off the interview, Christine, um, where can we find you on social media? Have you got a website? Uh, you know, have you got anything you'd like to promote? Anything? Anything? Yes. Well, um, mainly on Instagram at Christine mm -hmm. Webby. And uh, on Instagram, you can find a link to my, it's, it's a version of website. And it's where, you know, it's, it's christinewebby.comey.io. And um, that's where I have like, you know, the, the most recent news and, and things related to the projects, upcoming projects, my IMDb and all of that. Awesome. Well, in that case, I'll link all of that in the description. And to you at home, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF featuring me. Well, thank you so much.
You're welcome, it was a pleasure. Christine. Definitely. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you soon. Goodbye from me and Christine. Stay happy, stay safe. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Bye and cut.